Hello and welcome to Divining the Elementals with Chris Ann. And I am Chris Ann. Welcome. You are listening to PDN Radio, a division of the Pagan Business Network. Welcome. I'm so happy to introduce, as my very special guest tonight, my son, Ari. Say hi, Ari. Yeah, Ari's not feeling super great tonight. <laughs> he's he's happy and he's excited to be here, but his body just isn't cooperating with him tonight. So we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk about um, some of the tools that he works with. So if you don't know, my son is Ari, and Ari is how old are you, Ari? Nine. Yes, Ari's nine years old. He's He's having a very rough night. So Ari is a crystal child who is very, very gifted. He is very psychic. He does Reiki. He does um, very, very intuitive readings with pendulums and cards. So Ari, let's talk about the cards that you've got in front of you. What's that one called? So... Angel. Cherub Angel deck, and that's by Dorian Virtue. And what's that other one called? Power Animal Card. So these are the two decks that Ari likes to use. Yeah, Ari, I know Ari. Ari doesn't feel super great tonight. So you know what? Mo- mostly Mummy will be talking tonight, and that's okay. So Ari, why don't you just pull a card from this deck and that will sort of be our inspiration and I'll talk about the card. Okay. So you be the one to pull it and then I'll be the one to talk about it. Okay, great. Oh, all right. You pulled a great card. So this is from the cherub angel cards for children by Doreen virtue. And this card Ari pulled is there is nothing to fear. Hey, that's a great card. That's a great card for all of us, actually, not just you and I, but for everybody listening, there is nothing to fear. So we like this deck for you, Ari, and for our other kids that are out there, because this deck is in a box that is the traditional size of all the Hay House cards, but the actual cards itself is about a third of the size. So they're a really small deck of cards that are perfect for smaller hands like children or smaller adult hands like I have. These are much easier to um, to shuffle. And these cards are great because they're actually they're much smaller than a playing a traditional playing card deck size. And these are the ones that you like to use all the time. All right. Right. Yeah. He's saying yes. Um, These are really pretty yellows and purples and bright colored pictures on the deck uh, it's it's a lovely lovely cards so uh, we both recommend these for children we both think these are great yes he's shaking his head yes these are really good for kids of any age really and Ari's had this deck oh probably about two years now I think yeah he's shaking his head yes and um this has been probably his second or third deck that actually he got. He started off with a traditional tarot, which was a little more difficult for um, a, a younger child to use. <laughs> traditional tarot is really difficult for an adult to use. And then he got this great crystal deck for children. And we're going to talk about that deck on another show. But also he has, and he picked these ones out himself, the power animal cards. Ari, why don't you pick a card from this, this deck also. So when Ari does readings, because people come into the shop and Ari will do readings on them, he doesn't use just one deck of cards. He uses from two to four decks of cards. So this deck right here is the Power Animal Oracle Cards by Stephen Farmer. And he has some amazing animal decks. And the card that you just pulled is the wolf, which is saying you are safe and protected at all times. Very consistent reading here. Are you doing a good job? You want to pick another card from this deck? And then I'll talk about it. All right. Cool. Next one is ooh, the monkey. 
And this is saying the situation calls for adaptability and innovation. So really, really, really good cards are that you're pulling here. So I think those are some very good words that all of us can follow and all of us can sort of heed those um, comforting words of knowing that we're good, we're safe, and it's okay to be a little adaptable in some of the situations. So since R is not feeling too well, <laughs> we were going to talk about what it is to be a crystal child. So you know what? I'll do the talking <laughs> because clearly I can talk. So a crystal child is a child that's born nowadays, and I want to say up into the late 20s kind of tops um, is is classified as a crystal child. And crystal children are here now that are on this planet that are super intuitive, super gifted healers. And also, they struggle. They struggle because their vibration doesn't necessarily match the vibration of others around them. And they're here to help raise the vibration of the planet, to raise the vibration of some of the other people around us, to bring a little bit of insight, to really play on the heartstrings so people can um, open up their hearts in a new way. Crystal children are kind of those unique souls that we're just so blessed to have around us. Crystal children do typically have some health problems that, that unfortunately is part of the the game and a couple of reasons why one already i mentioned is the vibration is a little bit off with these kids compared to some of the other people around them and that's not necessarily a bad thing and also another reason is so they can overcome and then be an example to be an example of what is possible not just crystal children, but but some of the indigos as well. And the indigos are much, much older. The indigos are my generation. Uh, um, and I'm an older indigo, actually. Typically, indigos are, I would say, around the age of 40. A little, little older than 40 is pushing it. And to about 30-ish. That's sort of the, the indigo age. You know, I, I myself being an indigo was um, kind of unique, <laughs> I want to say, when I was growing up. You know, talking to the dead was just very normal for me and being psychic was very normal for me. But that really freaked a lot of other people out. It didn't bother me. I didn't care that they were freaked out and it didn't bother me that I could do what I could do. I'm, I was always extremely comfortable in my skin and that was their problem. And that is kind of of the same of the crystal children now. The indigos were sort of paving the way, so to speak, getting everybody else on board for, hey, this is who's coming in the next generation. Be ready, be prepared. These kids are amazing. These kids are amazing healers. They get the planet. They get the plants. They get the animals. They get all of the nature Gaia connection. They get all of that because they feel it. They live it. They breathe it. They feel it. It's amazing. And they get crystals in a big way. <laughs> so that crystal child name is extremely apropos. You know, when I have kids come into the store and they just naturally gravitate right towards the crystal room with all these great crystals are in it. And the kids just go gaga for these crystals. And nine times out of 10, they're kind of explaining it to the adults. Don't you think, Ari? Don't you think the, the kids love the crystals? You love the crystals I in there, too. You absolutely can say something. Go ahead. Um, when you were just saying stuff, yep. um, I just saw, like, a vision Ooh. of what you were going to say, <gasps> and then you did say it. See? That's awesome, Ari. That's a crystal child. Thank you. That's a perfect example. Ari, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. I love it when you do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it's hard for other people to understand it, don't you think? Mm -hmm. But do we care? No, that's their problem. Because we're good with who we are. We're good with what we do. And you know what's even more important? 
you're helping people, mm. which is wonderful because I think everybody can help people, but not everybody does help people. Mm. And I think that's what makes the Crystal Children so wonderful is they are so willing and able to help and they want to help. Don't you think? Yeah. yeah. So thank you for being awesome and special. <laughs> I know, unfortunately, he really doesn't feel good. So if you want to go off and go to bed, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, you can go right now if you want. Okay, say goodbye to everybody. Okay, go ahead. Have a good night. All right. So he's going to make his way to bed. He made sort of a, a um, small debut. We'll have him back on another show. Tonight just wasn't his night. As a crystal child, he suffers... Um, unbelievably actually physically physically he's got a lot of problems and and that is kind of typical of crystal children that they'll either be on the spectrum or they'll have physical uh disabilities and huh, you know it just breaks your heart but these kids are here to really make a difference really 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 make a difference to bring awareness and a lot of times you see adults that are just um, really have the walls up. They're not really willing and able to see the other side of the spectrum, the other side of the possibilities of life. And that's what these kids are here to teach us and show us and help us. And it's wonderful. And I'm very honored that he chose me as his mom. <laughs> Some days it's a challenge. I'll be honest. It's not always a piece of cake. But it's an honor and it's a gift and, and it's wonderful. It's a, it's a real joy because the perspective that these children can bring into our lives, the way that they see things is really cool because these crystal children are also very artistic, very, very creative. So not only is their perspective, perspective of the world really amazing and wonderful but when they put it into art it's it's wonderful it's really really wonderful um so on a personal note for many many years Ari was nonverbal um he had had a severe allergic reaction to inoculations at the age of 1 so since the age of, and he had wonderful, wonderful speech. He was clear and speaking like an adult before the age of one, because crystal children are super intelligent as well. So before the age of one, he had amazing speech, amazing speech. And after these inoculations, it really did him in because that vibration just didn't match his. And he had a severe allergic reaction to it. And he had intensive speech therapy. For, uh, let's see, from the age of one and a half all the way to the age of four and a half. And he didn't get his back until the age of three and a half. And by speech, I mean a couple of words here and there. It really wasn't speech. It was occasional words. He had gone from complete sentences to nothing for years. That is kind of common with some of the crystal children that I have met. And this isn't a show about inoculations and whether you choose to do them or not. Um, clearly, you know where I stand on them. <laughs> but I'm not a doctor. I am not telling you what to do with your children. And likewise, please don't with mine. But for me and for my choice, my son will never get another inoculation again. Nor will he get of any shot of any type ever. Because some of this is not the right vibration for him. But please, once again, I'm not a doctor. Don't let me advise you and your children. I'm merely relaying my story of my family and what has happened and what has occurred. So because of that, he was nonverbal for many years. So I would give him pens and papers and paintbrushes and you know a lot of it was scribbles because he's low tone and he has very poor trunk stability and very poor muscle control but you know what he was able to hold some paintbrushes and he's been painting since the age of a few months old and you know 
maybe scribbles, but it was amazing artwork to me. And I have all these wonderful things because I would have them paint on canvases. So I would encourage you to do the same thing with your children. Have them paint, have them color. And I never had them paint on paper. I only had them paint on canvases <laughs> because to me, everything was a masterpiece. And you can get if it's not a stretched canvas, you can get a, a regular canvas that's just sort of a thinner canvas um, or canvas paper or something like that. You can get that cheap enough. But you know what? As parents, you want to preserve all these wonderful memories. So I really encourage you, if you have a child that's on the spectrum or you have a child that's different or you have a child that you know is a crystal child, do some amazing art projects with them. Bring color into their lives because that's exactly what they're doing for you. They're bringing color and joy and happiness into our lives. And it's just such a gift and just such a joy to have have these wonderful kids around us. And you know, if you've worked in the school department, you've seen this really kind of interesting shift that's been happening. And part of the shift is some of the children are kind of rebelling and they're much more brazen with their words. And they're much more vocal with their feelings and their actions. And part of that, part of that is a good thing. If we're going to look at the flip side of the coin, it's difficult. It's difficult to work on a school system nowadays, not just because of the um, structure of what you have to teach is so dramatically different, but also um, the children are dramatically different and, you know, they're dealing with a lot of emotions. They're dealing with a lot of pressures and stress and different things like that. So by witnessing this amazing shift, it is telling us that this is where we are going. We are going to a place where we need to get our emotions out. We need to be able to speak freely and have a safe environment in order to do that. We need to be able to go with the shift. We need to be able to shift with the shift. And as we do that, we give these kids permission to be who they are. And I think that's just so important for any child, not just a Christian child, but for any child. And for sensitive kids, like the crystal children, sensitive on so many levels, sensitive to the foods that are around us, sensitive to the smells that are around us, sensitive to the vibrations that are around us, sensitive to people's thoughts, feelings, emotions, sensitive on every possible term of the word. Every definition of that word sensitive is what these kids are. And it is really amazing how much it can open our eyes. Even if we're sensitive to these things already, as adults, we are able to turn that on and off. Kids aren't. Kids are not able to turn that on and off. And think of the onslaught of all these senses coming into them. It is just overwhelming. So that's our job. That's our job to kind of help, help in any way we can. And, and one way we can help is just being there and saying, it's okay, let's listen, let's talk about this. And, and if they're not able to talk about it, that's okay. Let's do some artwork and let's get these emotions out through artwork or play Legos or stack blocks, knock down blocks. Line up some cars, play trains, play dolls. However it is that your child can communicate in their way to you, we need to be able to speak their language. We don't need to expect them every moment of the day to speak our language. So let's speak their language for a few minutes. And what an amazing world these kids live in. It's a challenge. It's a big challenge. This is a whole new experience, a whole new world for these kids, obviously. But even more so when every single noise 
has a vibration. Every noise has a color. Every noise has a picture. And you do that times how many noises you hear in a minute, it gets overwhelming. And I'm not just talking about children on the spectrum. And many kids on the spectrum are, are crystal children. But even if they're not on the spectrum, you can still be a crystal child and not be on the spectrum. Even those not on the spectrum are still experiencing that. Every sound has a color. Every sound has a picture. Every sound has a vibration. It's overwhelming. So think of the empaths that you know that are adults that may walk into a room and pick up on everybody's vibration and how difficult that can be. Now, be a crystal child and multiply that times 10 or even 100. It's overwhelming. So I think we need to have a little more patience with these kids. And at times, I think we need to stop dumbing it down for them. And we need to have a different level of respect. You know, I used to work in the public school system. And I insisted that all my students call me by my first name because it was a different level of respect. I was working for them. I was there to help with their education. They weren't working for me. I was working for them and we were going to work together. And thus, you address me by my first name, which is my name. And the adults had a real problem with that. And you know what? That was their problem. That wasn't mine. That's how I ran my place. That was my students. And that was what I was doing. Take it or leave it. And that's still how I work with students. I still teach at my healing center in wells and we do art classes there for children we have a whole host of different things children are welcomed in the majority of our classes anyways you call me by my first name you call me by my name that's how i'm going to address you that's how i want you to address me because we need to remember there's a level of respect I do not need to put myself up on a pedestal to make myself better than you. Whether you are 3, 30, or 93, I don't care. We all have commonalities that we can meet in the middle with. And I think that is what really bothers me. What I see going on with our society is there is no respect for children, but yet, These children are expected to respect their elders. And I don't agree with that. I think it is mutual. And I think there needs to be a mutual level of respect. So when I work with crystal children, I make sure they know that. I make sure they know that I have a level of respect for them. And I think that's something that, they haven't always been told. And I'm not saying they're it's the parents' fault or any of that. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying our society as a whole with public school and all that, we forget to respect the children. And I just think that's so important because these children are our future. And the next generation is going to be their future. And I think we need to start rethinking what we're doing because going to war every time we turn around isn't exactly working for us as a planet here. (laughs) So if we have these great, fantastic crystal children that are coming in that are going to tweak what we've been doing to try and bring some love and light into the planet, How fantastic is that? How wonderful, gifted, and honored should we be as a society that this next generation has chosen to come through as a whole right now for us, 
to help us to raise the vibration of the planet and to shine the light on where it is that we should be going. We're going to take a little bit of a commercial break. We're going to talk about where we're going when we come back. You've been listening to Divining the Elementals with Chris Ann on PBN Radio, Pagan Business Network. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Is your ritual cloak ready for the rag bin? Are your guest towels sad and worn? Is your tote bag begging to retire? Then you need Twitch's Stitches. Twitch's Stitches is a custom embroidery shop with a pagan flair. From the classics and everyday designs to ornate ritual style, fantasy, furries, mythical, and so much more. They do t-shirts, ritual capes and cloaks, sweats, towels, blankets, hoodies, totes, and more. You name it, Twitch's Stitches can embroider it. And they love custom orders. So if you don't find what you're looking for, they're only a phone call or a message away. So if you want quality items lovingly crafted and embroidered, you have to check them out on Facebook. And that's www.facebook.com forward slash Twitch's Stitches. That's T-W-I-T-C-H-E-S, S-T-I-T-C-H-E-S. However, we can't be held responsible when your friends and family try to swipe them, so tell them to get their own. Twitch's Stitches, for the love of design. I'm going to share with you a company founded on passion. A passion dreamed into existence by two lightworkers to share the gift of holistic healing with the world. Acting on the belief that infusing ritualistic components like the use of crystals and moon cycles, Reiki and more, enhances the quality and energetic profile of their alchemic creations and their spiritual workings. A passion for the rare and unique that touches all they create and do. What is this wonder-filled place, you ask? It's the altruistic apothecary. A place of magical items like rune sets, god and goddess statues, amulets and talismans, incense, bombs, bath salts, and more. A place of spiritual guidance and healing from an intuitive medicine woman, holistic health practitioner, and Reiki master, offering spiritual medium readings, rune readings, healing sessions, and more. It's there. They're ready. The door is open. All you have to do is ask, and they will share with you all the secrets they possess to help you on your path. Find them on Facebook or on their website, www.altruisticapothecary.com, A-L-T-R-U-I-S-T-I-C-A-P-O-T-H-E-C-A-R-Y.com. Wonder awaits you. Hello and welcome back to Divining the Elementals with Chris Ann. And I, of course, am Chris Ann. And you're listening to PBN Radio, a division of the Pagan Business Network. Welcome back. Well, my son Ari joined us just, just for a few minutes. He's having a very, very rough night tonight. And his health is not such that he's able to do it tonight. So I apologize for that. We'll have him back another time because he really does enjoy radio normally when he's up to it. Um, But we will bring awareness to, I believe it's next month, as a matter of fact, I believe it's May, which is Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome Awareness Month. So we'll have to do like a big thing next month for that because we have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. So that's why he's having a rough day. His body doesn't produce enough collagen. So it's really hard for his body to kind of hold it all together. And he fell coming into my room to get ready for this show tonight. So, oh, it's just been a disaster. So anyways, let's give the poor kid a break. (laughs) But that's what happens with crystal children. Crystal children can just be up one minute and down the next with um, emotions and health problems. So we've been talking about all these wonderful kids that are coming in during this lifetime, coming in to help us to raise the vibration of the planet. So I said we were going to talk about 
where we are going. So where we are going, very, very interesting conversation. So many people (laughs) in the know like to have this conversation with me and they'll say, you know, I just don't see the society continuing to go the way it is. And I'm like, well, very interesting. You should ask. (laughs) I had studied a number of years ago with Diana Cooper. And I think she's just a phenomenal teacher. She's out of England. So if you ever have a chance to go over to England and study with her, go ahead. Because I don't think she's coming back to the U.S. to teach anymore. From what I heard, I hope that's wrong. But from what I heard, she's not coming back to the U.S. anymore. And I was lucky enough to study with her during one of her first teaching trips to this area. And it was phenomenal. And in that class, she had talked about where we were going as a society and where we were going as a global society, as a planet. And at that time, so let's see, how many years ago was that? So that was probably, so let's see, my son was about one. So that was about eight years ago that I studied with her. So at that time, she had said, give it about 30 years. And we will see a dramatic shift in how this culture works. And it's funny because since she has said this, I'll get into more detail about what she said. But since she has said this, I have seen some others say very, very similar things. And some that have said this 200 years ago, 100 years ago, plus. So anyways, what she had said, so there's been a lot of cooperation to what she has said. What she said was, as a society, give it about 30 years. Now, of course, mine is eight years from that. So we're at about 20 plus years. Um, We will dramatically change the way money is viewed. Right now, as a society, money talks. Money is what makes it happen kind of unfortunately, and those with money have more power. Well, that's not what she said is going to continue. What's going to continue is we are going to revert back to where we were as a society two, three, four hundred years ago, where we lived off the land, we traded with those. If I'm growing potatoes and you're growing corn, you know what, let's do a trade. And that's how we are going to get our products. That's how we're going to get our livelihood is is going to be from trading and bartering and living off the land. And she was saying that we're going to need to live by freshwater sources. We are going to notice a dramatic shift in the lay of the land. So... The people that are living in higher elevations might be a little bit better off, is what she was saying. And she was saying that, you know, we really have to start planning and working with our skills and our talents. And, you know, those that can build houses with their hands are going to be wonderful as opposed to those that don't have those type of handy skills because we're going to have to be able to figure it out is what she was saying and she's going to say that there is going to be a dramatic shift to all of this part of it is going to be the earth that's going to be shifting And the waterways are going to be shifting. The um, shoreline is going to look different, etc. All of that. All of that is going to be very different. Being somebody who lives by the ocean, I paid attention. (laughs) So, you know, um, I'm not trying to create panic by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just saying, you know, with the official children coming in and the way they see things and the way they perceive things, it can be really helpful for us. Start paying attention. Start listening to the children. Start listening to your own intuition as well. 
you know, I, I kind of joke when I watch some of these shows where the people are couponing and they're just stacking this mass of all this food in their basements. And, you know, it's kind of like a hoarding of food. And I chuckle and I think, you know, they're probably the ones that are onto something, <laughs> you know, and, and the people that are able to farm their own foods and are able to be resourceful enough to sew their own clothing and have their own water sources on their property. You know, these are good things. These are great things. So by no means am I here to create a panic. I'm not. But I'm just saying, start looking into what some of these psychics have been saying for actually a long time. It's not just Diana Cooper that's been saying this. And she was saying that her angels and her guides had given her this information for her to pass on as an FYI. So, you know, look, look at some of the messages that Edgar Casey has been bringing through. And that was quite a number of years back. You know, he hasn't been with us for quite a while. So look at all of those messages that he brought through. And that was relatively within our lifetime. So, you know, if these kids are coming in at this time, these crystal children, and us as indigos are here to give them a safe place to be and, and pave the way for these kids to be here, we need to start paying attention. We need to start paying attention to how we treat the earth. How we treat each other, how we treat the animals. You know, on Facebook, I'm, I'm really so sick of seeing all these really sad, disgusting ways people treat animals on Facebook. Just, just don't send me these videos. I just, as an empath, is just heart-wrenchingly disgusting to the point that I just don't want to see them. I know horrible, terrible things happen. I can feel it. I know it. I don't need to see it every single day don't no it's yucky it's gross so we need to start changing how we treat each other how we treat the animals how we treat our plants hello <laughs> all these food allergies we have are a direct result of all this chemical manipulation that's been going on to the planet and looking at these crystal children it is extremely evident because a lot of these kids have food allergies. There's another commonality for you. That these kids just aren't vibrating with the way the food has been manipulated. And it's really sad because even the seeds are manipulated as well. And it's hard to know what to do. So, you know, we eat as organic as we can within our budget because it's, it's expensive on one hand, but yet farmer's markets are great on the other hand. So, you know, you pick and choose and we don't go into McDonald's. There's nothing there we can eat. We're allergic to everything in there. So is that a good thing? Yeah, we look at having food allergies as a good thing when it comes to that. Because we are eating as pure and as healthy as we can within our budget. I mean, would I like the convenience of going to McDonald's? Yes, I would. But I don't have that luxury. You know, it takes a long time to prepare food. And that's okay. I have a lot of help. I'm very, very lucky. I have a lot of help. I couldn't do it by myself. Let's just say that. I just simply couldn't do it. And, you know, having a kid with challenges is a challenge. It's a big challenge. But the joy that he brings to so many people is just wonderful. You know, he has, when he's feeling good, he's got a bright smile. If you saw the advertisement for the show, you'll see he's got a great smile. So these kids not just my son, but these kids need to be listened to and paid attention to and given wings. You know, I gave my son these tarot cards. I let him go into the shop 
pick another deck of cards. What, what do you want? What do you want to work with? I gave him the wings to do that. And because of that, he now does paid readings at the shop. He charges $6 for a reading. And you get, um, you get it, like about eight pulls from a couple different decks. And then you get a pendulum question at the end. And he makes the pendulums that are in the shop, too. He does a lot of the spray paint art that's in the shop. He's evolved with his artwork. So I have given him the tools to be able to express himself in other ways. You know, verbally, he has come a long way. He's got very clear speech now. He's, he has worked extremely hard to get where he is at. And these kids have to work doubly hard to get to where the expectations are for them to be. And a lot of times they're just at their own pace. And that's okay too. But we need to have plans in place to help them along the way. And I think Society is having a hard time with some of the other children that are on the spectrum that they don't get the fact that, you know, a little bit of help goes a long way because these kids are going to give back in an even bigger way. So I think compassion <laughs> might be the word to use. You know, not, not a lot of people have compassion. You know, there's a video going around, and I absolutely love this video of this boy. Well, boy, I call him a boy. He's, he's a young man who's working in Starbucks. And I don't remember where it was, but it was a fantastic video. And he likes to dance. Because he's on the spectrum, he needs to constantly be moving. So his manager at Starbucks lets him dance. So he's, I believe he's called the dancing barista or something like that. So he makes the coffees and stuff at Starbucks and he likes to dance and move. And that's what he needs to do for his body. But huge kudos to his boss for allowing him to be able to do that. Instead of having him conform, we allowed him to soar. And how awesome is that? Because now... He brings a smile to so many people's faces. It's just such a joy. It's just such a joy to see the wonderful ways that these kids can help us. So if you are blessed enough to have a crystal child in your life, that is just so wonderful. You're one of the lucky ones because these kids teach us so many wonderful things every day every single day, whether it's things they point out about us to us, <laughs> which, yes, <laughs> could be a challenge, or it's just the way they just put a smile on our face. You know, these children at any age, even if they're a baby, they still can put a smile on your face. They still, these are the kids that can light up a room. These are the kids we need to pay attention to. Well, all children need to be paid attention to. But the crystal children have the amazing messages to come through to bring us. They have the insight. They have the gifts. And they have the joy. Because I think a lot of times as busy adults, it's hard to just take a moment just to take a breath and find our joy. Find our happiness. Bring that yellow back into our lives. It can be a challenge. You know, these kids can be a challenge too. But busy, busy lives, juggling work, juggling home life, all of that is a challenge. And we're all in the same boat together. It's not easy. But when we have these kids that just for a moment want to come up and give you a hug just because they know you deserve one right then and there and that's what you need. Oh, my goodness. What a joy that is. What a joy and what a gift. Huh. So <laughs> I hope you have a child like that, that you know. Or maybe you're a teacher and you have a couple of children like that in your classroom. You know, when my son was a toddler, a nonverbal toddler, keep in mind, 
I would take them to different children events or to the grocery store or wherever. And he would always manage to find the other nonverbal crystal children. (laughs) And they would all just kind of two or three of them would just stand there and gather. And you could see they were having a telepathic communication. They weren't doing it verbally out loud. It was a telepathic communication. Because every once in a while, you would see a smile come across all three of their faces. And you knew there was an unknown, unheard conversation going on. This happened time and time again with my son. My mother and I would just sit back and go, yep, there's the other crystal children. Yep, he's finding his group. There they all are. You know, it was really kind of neat to see they had each other just for a moment. Just for a moment, they could have that telepathic conversation. It was, it was always really cool to sit and watch it and video it. But, you know, I didn't have an iPhone and all that stuff then. So, <laughs> but it was always a really cool thing to just sit back and watch and let it be. Because I knew what was going on. I hope the other parents knew what was going on. Because it was always really cool and really neat. So, tonight's show is going to be a little abbreviated. Um, Since my son's not feeling too well, I need to kind of get to him and see what's going on with him, obviously. He has to be my priority. He's having a rough day today. But before I go, I would like to pull some cards for our messages of the week. So, I am pulling from... The Nature of Infinite Love and Gratitude card. So if I haven't reviewed these yet, I can't remember if I have or not. If I haven't reviewed these yet, I'm going to review them right now. So The Nature of Infinite Love and Gratitude by Dr. Darren R. Weissman. These are really neat cards. I like these. I use them a lot. Um, They are all photos, photographs, and they go horizontal and vertical both within the same deck. Some pictures are horizontal, some pictures are vertical. And they're pictures from all different seasons. So there's some pictures of animals in the winter, in the summer, in the spring. There's some images of leaves in the fall. It's it's all of nature. It's not just animals, but there is a lot of animals in this deck. And on the back, so, so on the front, it just has the picture and a simple word at the bottom. I don't really think there's phrases. I think it's just a word. Yeah, for all of these, it's just a word. But on the back, it's a whole sort of little mini paragraph or affirmation. And then on the bottom of every card, which is what I love, there's in sign language, the I love you, because I'm a sign language interpreter. So that's what I used to do in the public school system, is I used to be able to speak multiple ways to my students. Because my students many times were having the telepathic communication because they weren't able to speak the rest of society's language. And they weren't conforming. (laughs) How cool is that? So as I shuffle my cards, I know you can hear me shuffling. I'm going to pull a couple cards for our inspiration for the week. Oh, fantastic. I pulled the card of hope. And this is um, some green grass with some beautiful dew on it. Next card I'm going to pull. Oh, it's it's the card of passion. It is a lovely orange lily. And then the next card is feel. And how apropos for this conversation. It's a baby duck snuggled up into the mother duck. So for this week, we need to continually... Have hope. Have hope that everything is going to go exactly the way we want it to. Have passion. Do not forget to have passion in everything you do. Don't forget your passion. Have that creative energy that sparks your passion. And feel. Feel who you are, what you are, and when you are. It's okay to have those feelings. It's okay to express your feelings. You may not always feel comfortable to express them to everybody else, but you know, we've been talking about doing our work. 
get out a canvas, go draw in the dirt. Maybe you want to color. Everybody's into coloring lately, but I'm, I'm more of a painter kind of gal. So I would tell everybody, express your feelings in an artistic way. And if you need to use deep, dark colors to express your feelings, go ahead. Give yourself permission to do it. But if you want to express your feelings in bright, vibrant colors, go ahead and do that too. Feel it. Get it out. Use it as your vision board. Look at it and say, I created that. That is part of what I'm feeling. That is part of what my emotions are in the moment. And you know what? It's okay to have whatever your emotions are in a moment. It's okay to be happy. It's okay to be sad. And it's okay just to be who knows what in the moment. If that's what you're feeling, that's yours. And it's okay. It's okay. So I'm pulling one more card. Ooh, I got a lovely card here. It's a card of growth. And it shows a leaf that's kind of heart-shaped. We're going to grow from a heart center. As our heart grows and blossoms, so don't we. There's that ripple effect. The ripple effect coming from the heart, that wonderful green chakra energy that comes not just from the front of our body out from our heart, but also from the back of our body coming out from our heart. Because the heart chakra, as does the other chakras in the body, um, the yeah, five of the chakras in the body go front and back. Not just the heart, but five of them in the body go front and back. So a lot of times the heart chakra is a little more open in the back than it is in the front. And that's okay too. That's okay. But make sure your heart is open for yourself. Because that's the one we forget along the way. We're always so willing to help everybody else. What are we going to do for ourselves? We need to pay attention to what we need, what we want, what we feel, and express that for ourselves. Because if we can't be in a place where we need to be, how can we expect others to be? Or how can we expect to help others to be? So we need to get into that place of wholeness and happiness. And it's okay to be sad, too. We need to get into that zen. Find your zen. So we were using the Nature of Infinite Love and Gratitude cards. These are Hay House decks. So they are the standard Hay House size. And I like this deck. I highly recommend this deck. I sell this deck in my shop, Elemental Energies with Chris, Ann, and Jeff. I think this is a fantastic deck. I believe, I believe, this deck is on my website www.chrisann-jeff.com www.chrisann-jeff.com Any questions on that, feel free to contact me through Twitter or, or any of my shows. Feel free to contact me on Twitter at chrisann1234 and on Facebook, Elemental Energies with Chrisann and Jeff is also the name of my Facebook page. So it's me that answers on Facebook. It's Jeff that answers on the um, website. And come back Wednesday night for my other show with Jeff. Coincidentally enough, it's called Elemental Energies with Christina and Jeff. So anyway, we have a lot of really fun things planned. And once Ari is feeling a little bit better, My hope is to have him back because he has some great, amazing, fun things to share. And I would love for him to have our chat. So, you know, when the schedule allows, we are going to have him back on. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Sorry tonight has to only be an hour instead of my two-hour show. And, you know, life happens. But that's okay. We can roll with the punches that life is and you know these things happen teach us a lesson (laughs) you need to see the lessons the crystal children are teaching us because they are here to really hold the mirror up to us and i yeah yeah sometimes (laughs) so we need to learn the lessons because these kids are just 
oh, they're just such a joy. It's just such an honor that they pick us because they could have picked so many other people, but they picked us. How wonderful is that? What a gift, what a joy, and what an honor. What a challenge, but <laughs> what an honor. Hey, I'm realistic too. <laughs> Very realistic too. But, you know, there are times that these kids need just simply to be taken care of. As we need to be taken care of too, so it's okay. So let's give everybody permission that they can get what they need for this coming week. Just get what it is that you need and it's okay to say, I need this or I need that or I know you need this or that. Let me help you. So it's not being selfish. So many people think it's being selfish if they need to say, you know, I really need help right now. No, that's not being selfish. That's being realistic because everybody does need help. So it's okay. And it's okay to help somebody when they need help. It's okay to be there for somebody because a lot of times we are there for everybody, but sometimes we need help too. So it's okay to say that. So thank you all so much for tuning in. You've been listening to Divining the Elementals with Chris Ann. I, of course, I'm Chris Ann, and you are listening to PBN Radio, a division of the Pagan Business Network. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Be free. Since 2014, the Pagan Business Network has been building resources by bringing together pagan-owned and pagan-friendly businesses. With multiple resources available, it doesn't matter if you're an artesian, musician, vendor, author, publishing company, blogger, podcaster, event planner, or any other organization. We have the resources here to help you succeed. Becoming a member is easy and affordable, even for the smallest of budgets. With your membership, you will get Business Spotlight, which is an article written in an interview style, complete with details and photos. Social media sharing through the Pagan Business Network. A blog roll. A membership card for discounts at participating businesses. You'll also get discounts on tickets to all Pagan Business Network events and so much more. You can check us out at paganbusinessnetwork.com for more information.